All right, uh, thank you very much uh, for sticking around with us. Uh, let's start off um, from the English camp where Gary Southgate uh, has said uh, after Rashford's double strike against Wales on Tuesday that he's a player transformed for England. Uh, when Southgate named his England World Cup squad, it was by no means a certainty uh, that Rashford's name would be included uh, in that team uh, that got on the plane uh, to travel to Qatar. Today. So a well-deserved 3 0 victory uh, that set up a knockout encounter with African champions, the Taragala. All right, uh, Gareth Southgate, of course, hippie praise on Manchester United forward uh, Marcus Rashford. To talk about uh, what's going down in Qatar, I have Mohamed Abdullahi joining me live from Qatar uh, this evening. Uh, Mohamed, good evening. How are you doing? Uh, good evening, Mr. Wali. I'm fine. Qatar is buzzing and fine with you. I'm going what for. Where, where in Qatar are you? Where, where exactly? What, what center are you? Um, uh, exactly at the FIFA Pan Festival, uh, where we just watched the game uh, between uh, Tunisia and France. A game that end, uh, ended in a dramatic fashion for the Tunisians. Even though they didn't qualify for the round of 16, but at the end, their historic third win uh, in the history of the World Cup matches, you know, after uh, beating uh, uh, the French team by a one goal to nil. Uh, in fact, there was an equalizer at the end of the game, but uh, just before the end of the game, the PR ruled that uh, Antoine Griezmann was earlier in an offside position before assisting to pull up the uh, equalizer. So it uh, ended one nil in favor of uh, Tunisia. Uh, even though Tunisia garnered four points at the end of the group three encounters, uh, they were unable to qualify because the other game going on simultaneously between uh, Australia and Germany ended one nil in favor of Australia. So making France has six points, Australia also has six points, and then Tunisia four points, and Denmark ended with uh, one point. Uh, all right, Be before we go into all of these teams that the World Cup, uh, you are done in... Uh uh, former Super Eagles World Cup jersey uh, at the moment. How does it feel being a Nigerian in Qatar when there is no Super Eagles uh, at the World Cup? Yes, uh, it's a question of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people have asked me while in uh, Doha all the while. You know, it's, it's quite sad uh, that the Super Eagles have All right, it looks like uh, Mohammed having a slight uh, network problems. We'll try to uh, get him back uh, on the line in a bit. I was just asking him, I, I mean, it's been, we, we did have a conversation this morning with Fisar Odairo, um, uh, who is also headed to Qatar at the moment, uh, about, you know, the Super Eagles, how they would have fared. You know, there's been questions. Look, there's been a lot of upsets in this World Cup. Um, Tunisia beating France, Morocco beating Belgium. Saudi Arabia, of course, between Argentina, uh, Japan defeating Germany. I I'm not sure we can remember any World Cup in recent memory that's produced as many uh, upsets as we've seen uh, in this World Cup. Uh, so, I mean, how would the Super Eagles have fared? Uh, I think we have Mohammed back on the line. Uh, Mohammed, um, you, you were just telling us what it feels like to be a Nigerian in Qatar, uh, a World Cup that doesn't have the Super Eagles. Yes, it's sad that the Super Eagles are not here, like I mentioned earlier. But again, we have to do our job as pundits, as media men, and as journalists to cover the World Cup. Uh, you know, I know it would have been better for the Super Eagles to be here, but um, still, I'm sure there are people back home that are still following the game as it unfolds there in Qatar. But it's sad, like I mentioned, but again, the game has to go on. You remember, like I said, uh, the Italians are not here as well. Uh, so, and they are also, so, uh, you know, one of the regular attendees at the, uh, at the World Cup. They are not here as well, but uh, it's what it is. Um, the game has to go on. Yeah. All right, yes, I do agree. I mean, he has to go on. It is what it is. Uh, but talking about the other teams that are representing Africa uh, at this World Cup, I, I think we can both agree, Mohammed, uh, that they've they've done a human's job, right? You know, some of them most likely won't qualify. For instance, Tunisia, uh, who have crashed out of the World Cup, uh, but but they've gone and given a great account of themselves. Uh, 
Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I think the undoing for Tunisia, if we start from there, is uh, is the loss uh, is the loss. Sorry, against uh, Australia. But again, uh, I was telling a colleague earlier. Um, I was thinking the Australian team. No disrespect to Australians, that uh, I was thinking the team was not that good. But you know, putting a one win uh, win against Denmark, they convinced me that this Australian team. I think perhaps we saw that. Uh, they were crushed by uh, by the French team 4-1. We thought um, they are not that good. But seriously, uh, pulling a 1-0 win against uh, the Denmark this evening uh, shows that the Australian team are not here to play. They are not regulars, but seriously, um, they've, they've really proven themselves as one of the youngest teams in this competition. And uh, they've done so well. Coming back to your question, Tunisia, yes. Um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, they, they, they got four points which in some cases would have uh, helped them qualify to the round of 16. But uh, unfortunately, uh, in this case, with the four points that they've garnered, they got a, 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 a goalless draw against Denmark. Uh, they beat uh, the reigning world champion uh, this evening, 1-0. But unfortunately, that is not enough to take them to the second round. Uh, for Senegal, come on, the, world, uh, the, the African champions have done so well. Uh, they gathered six points, you know, from that group. Uh, and uh, we'll be seeing them in the second round of the competition against um, uh, the, the, the underachievers, like I used to call them. Uh, the, 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 the team from, from England uh, is going to be uh, a, a, a great game. And then we. Oh, it looks like. Um, uh, go, go ahead. Go uh, ahead. So I think it's a, it's a game that they will give it all. Uh, Hello? Go ahead. Okay, yeah. So I think Ghana have a chance with you, right? They, they need a win, which, or even a draw should be able to uh, take them to the round of 16, which I, I believe by Friday they will be able to, to pull up. For Cameroon, yes, it's a very dicey one. Uh, uh, very much. Any results. Well, so we are expecting also Cameroon to pull off that shocker. We are expecting Cameroon to pull off that shocker against uh, Brazil, if it is possible. Uh, so, yeah, the African team have really tried. Uh, at least we should be having two or at least two African teams in the round of 16. Unlike in, in 2018 in Russia, where none of the African teams qualified for the round of 16. All right, Mohammed. another talking point uh, from the World Cup uh, ongoing in Qatar has been all of the politics surrounding the competition. Uh, leading up to the tournament, it was all politics, politics uh, in the media um, and even during the, the competition. For those of us who are not in Qatar, uh, there's been a lot of focus on off-field issues, political issues. You are in Qatar. How, what, what's the atmosphere like? You know, does it feel very political, the ongoing World Cup in Qatar? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Actually, uh, most of the media um, instructions have been uh, from the Western media, like you rightly agree with me. Uh, uh, but for me, seriously, Qatar has, is pulling off like one of the very best, if not the very best World Cup ever. If you permit me, I will tell you so many things that the Qataris have done that I feel... This I, I think that, that's probably a conversation we'll have um, maybe particular, next week. Particular. No, no particularly in terms of facilities, seriously. I don't want to mention that, you know, they, they've spent quite a huge amount that, you know, the, the bar is so high, it's so set high that I, 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 I really don't see any nation seriously, in the nearest future, you know, surpassing that. To tell you, coming into Qatar, you are coming into a country which you have, which is, which is more or less contactless with humans. What I mean is, as you come into the airport, uh, because of the number of people coming to the country on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, you know, no immigration officer is checking you whatsoever. You just scan your passport, you know, the door opens for you, and then you, your picture is taken... Boom. Get either the, the metro or the bus that will take you to the 
that, that will take you to your uh, your accommodation. You understand? And all these are done uh, in, in a jiffy. Within five, ten minutes as you arrive, Qatar, you are able to clear immigration, like I mentioned, it's contactless, machine readable, uh, whatsoever. So, you know, and again, with the higher card, we, I'm sure you all know, you can access all the stadia, uh, access your accommodation, access the metro, access the buses free of charge. Like I tell you, this is one World Cup that I've seen, like I used, like, like I would say, is a digital World Cup. Seriously. Because the touch with humans is so less because this reduce, this increases efficiency and ensure the smooth flowing of, uh, of, uh, of, of events and processes. Coming back to, uh, uh, to your question proper, in terms of politics, I have not seen any political things happening here, except one or few uh, instances where uh, we have, like yesterday, in, in one of the games, I think in the USA game, one of the fans tried to raise uh, a rainbow flag and the police immediately accosted him, arrested him, you know, uh, and they, they, they seized his higher card which gives access to all the stadia, and then they gave him like for eight hours or more to leave the country. So, but generally it's been peaceful, it's been a loving first, uh, competition, and everyone is going about their duties, whether you are a fan, whether you are a volunteer, whether you are a worker here, everyone is going about their duties judicial. All right, Mohammed, we're, we're going to continue this conversation um, on a later date. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have enough time. Uh, you seem to have um, very good experiences of Qatar. And honestly, all of, all of our colleagues that I've spoken to in Qatar uh, have the same positive experiences about the country. But, I mean, we'll definitely keep this conversation up uh, in subsequent editions of Plus Sports on Plus TV. Uh, thank you very much, Mohammed, for joining us on the show this evening. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah. All right. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, that's why I'm uh, talking to us uh, live from Qatar. Um, uh, and um, uh, I mean, it, it, like I said, you know, it's been a lot of politics in the media. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, you know, all of the isms uh, away from the games. But I mean, the guys who are in Qatar just want to watch some football. Uh, you know, they, they just want to, you know, enjoy the round of the game being kicked about uh, for 90 minutes and, and, you know, get the results that they need. Uh, to become world champions. But, I mean, quickly, uh, let's move on as we wind down on the show this evening.